Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our four-year anniversary show, and we are big pimping in the studio as my chair falls back. This is this you is more. You already put some Jameson in his. Uh... This is more pimping for me. What's up? We got Dave Burke on the lines. From Australia, where it's like really late there, dude, huh? And he, and he stayed up late, yeah. He stayed he up early. Close. How are you, my friend? Good. It's uh, 12.30 in the morning here. Why it's so dark and everything outside. Excellent. Well, I'll it- just kind of rub it into you, Dave. At 12.30 in the morning, last night, I was uh, in Stogie Santa's garage smoking Cohiba <laughs> Lanceros. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's not too many people that live to tell that tale, Will. No, I know. Whenever you start the sentence with, I was in Stokey Santa's garage, like, not too many people say <laughs> that because they, yeah. they don't get out. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> That's right. Yep. So, Dave, what are you smoking, dude? I, well, because of um, Halloween and whatnot, I'm smoking the Tatuaje, the Wolfman. Okay. Love that cigar. The original so, Wolfman? Uh, Is that the original? Yeah. I love that cigar. Yeah. Why, was there a fake Wolfman? Well, there's a wolfie and the wolf, which were the no, little yeah. and the pudgy. The little monsters and the pudgy monsters. But I, but, I yeah. do like that that Sumatra wrapper in Is the big size. Is it Sumatran wrapper it's on that Sumatra one? It's a Sumatra wrapper on that one, yeah. Yeah, and it has the big um, shaggy foot at the bottom. Yeah, I really like that cigar. Is that uh, Sumatran Sumatra or Ecuadorian Sumatra? Ecuadorian Sumatra. Gotcha. Yeah, Pete will work with Ecuadorian Sumatra from time to time. It's a great, it's a great wrapper. It is, yeah. Uh, I'm starting to dig into some of the, the details the there. Hi, the Based high, on some of the blending seminars that we've done, I'm really yeah. starting to dig getting into some of the various wrappers. And then it's nice because when you do that, you can kind of go back and say, oh, that cigar, like the Wolfman, was Ecuadorian Sumatra. I'm going to go smoke it again and see how that cigar presents the wrapper flavor. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and so then, you know, the so hide so. is also an Ecuadorian Sumatra, but a different blend, and it's a completely different experience. Yeah. So oh, That's interesting. Uh, so Dave, to, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say I have to give a shout out to um, Cigar Jukebox and Stogie Geek listener Brett Smith, who's in Australia, who sent me this cigar um, to have on the show. So nice. thank you, Brett. Excellent, Brett. Excellent. So now, Dave, we've talked before about the uh, cigar smoking laws in Australia. Has anything changed since we last talked, or are they pretty much stayed the same? The tax has gone up. That, oh, that's changed. Because taxes always go up. They never go down. No. Um, no, I mean, there hasn't been any re- um, relaxing of the taxes. I mean, to give your listeners and stuff an idea, the taxes here, if you take the tariffs and the taxes into account, um, it's about $280 a pound in tobacco. So, like... Oh, uh, so like the Davidoff Nicaraguan Toro mm-hmm. here costs forty four dollars. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's- and so that's all tobacco regardless of where it's coming from. So I mean you can get Cuban cigars there, but they're still taxed the same way. Yep. Yeah, they're still taxed the same way. Um and because of the restrictions as well, um you can't they don't have events here because you can't give cigars out at events. Wow. And there's there's very few places to hold events, so mm-hmm. we don't have events really either. It, you know, so again, really you just heard two things if you're listening. Imagine paying $44 for a Davidoff of Nicaragua. People are already not wanting to pay 15 to 17 And not being able to go to an and event. And not being able to go to an event. And as a retailer, not being able to have events. Re- events are very events important are to the retailers cheap. and the manufacturers. Yes, it's a, it's a fabric of that. Mm-hmm. That's how they sell a good portion of their cigars. Dave, let me ask you. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Dave. I was going to say, the trickle down, too, is that when you do have shops here, because there's very few brick-and-mortar shops here, most people pay, most people buy their cigars online. Mm -hmm. um, From, I mean, they're from Australian retailers, but they just don't have a a brick-and-mortar shop. Oh, Um, I see. What it does, though, is it really hurts the diversity of what you can get. Because people will only stock what they know they're going to sell. 
So you really only get sort of your bigger brands. Like you don't get like your Roma Craft isn't sold out here. Crown Heads isn't out here. Um, Viaje isn't out here. Tatuaje isn't out here. Uh, a lot of cigars that you guys feature on your show when you do Stogies of the Week, they don't sell here because for the retailer to have to pay all the money for the restrictions, they only stock what they know people are going to buy, and it really hurts the diversity in the market. Hmm. That's a good point. That's interesting. So you said there's online retailers that are in Australia. So you don't do you pay less taxes when you buy it domestically as opposed to importing it? Uh, no, I mean, they're pretty much the same. Um, I guess they're online. Like, for example, like I buy a lot of my cigars through a place called um, Cigar Hut that's based in Sydney. Mm -hmm. But for the retailer, because cigars are so expensive, they can't really afford to stock and pay the overhead for the shop. Yep. So they find that a better way is they pay for the stock to come in, but they have an online shop, so they have less of the kind of overhead cost. I see. Because they can't, they can't have events in their shop to bring people in, so it's really difficult to get traffic into your shop because you can't really advertise it, and you can't have events in it to bring people in. So they go more the online route and do a lot of word-of-mouth marketing and, and stuff like that. And so now, does Cigar Hut, do they sell to people outside of Australia, or are they priced already with Australian taxes, so it's only in-country? They're priced um, in-country. I mean, I don't know. I think sometimes they get overseas buyers for, like, really hard-to-find cigars. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, they would still have to pay uh, whatever the price is. I mean, it's not a discount or anything, because yep. the... Retailer has to recoup all the money they brought for bringing it in. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, are there restrictions on where you can smoke, like in your house or in your car? I don't. They they tried recently. Recently, they tried to pass something about smoking in their car, but I don't think it's passed. The main thing here, restriction wise, well, I mean, out in public places like parks and stuff like that. But the main thing here, restriction-wise, is where you go, which hurts events, is because there's a lot of restrictions around smoking and drinks and food in bars. Mm. So a lot of the cigar bars that exist, there's very few cigar bars exist in the whole country. Mm -hmm. But the ones they do existed before the regulations, and they got mm -hmm. grandfathered in. So, yeah, I mean, those, and then we have the plain packaging here as well. So they don't have like they they have to wrap like a um like a uh, piece of white paper around the band because so you can't see the band when you buy them. That's ridiculous. Um, but so there are places you can go have a drink and a cigar, but there's only a couple in the whole country. Oh yeah, like I can only think of I can only think of like three. Any so what's the closest one to you? To me, ah, it's like a four-hour flight. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and Dave, you don't live in the outback I don't either. mean to, yeah, I don't mean to Dave laugh. Lives, you, live in, um, you live in part of a, a metropolitan area, so to speak. It just goes to show how lucky we are. I mean, to be in Rhode Island, uh, the closest place where I can go drink and have a cigar, other than our own studio, which is one, number two would be right next door at the Havana Cigar Club. And they're both a mile yeah. apart from and each other. And then down the street at... At Joyles, Joyles and yeah. then East Greenwich, which is not too far from here, there's one, two, three places where you can. Well, two places you can have a drink. Three places are the third place is a shop that you can smoke in. Yeah. So if uh, you know, for folks who um, don't think this is real, you know, that's why you got to join Cigar Rights of America. Absolutely. So we want 100% participation. Sign up, renew, use my membership code zero one five nine. I'll send you an additional cigar if you send an email to me showing proof of that. Dave, what's your most favorite cigar you've smoked recently? Ah, uh, the most favorite cigar I smoked recently. Um, let me think. I had, well, I had the um when I was um I was uh, did a thing with Will the other day, and I had the um the uh, 
Jekyll, and that was really, really good. Love I that. really like that cigar. That's last year's. That's last year. Last I like the Jekyll a lot. I, it's sm- probably smoking pretty good now, right? Yeah. I had, and he told me I can say that I had it. So I had in preparation, I'm going to have Steve um, Saka on the show. Mm-hmm. And I had one of his cigars, the Sobre Mesa. Yeah. And that cigar is amazing. I and that, too, is in Ecuadorian Sumatra? Did you uh, say? Habano. Ecuadorian Habano. Ecuadorian Habano. Which uh, I've kind of said a couple of times. Steve Saka once told me he wasn't the biggest fan of that rapper, and I kind of said something to him about that. And he reminded me about something else. He said, "Well, because Will, because I agree, it's it's the rapper isn't one of my first choices. But when working with the right binder, which he's using a, a special Mexican binder on that thing, it works extremely well. So, hats off to Steve. I have not smoked it yet. It's about to start hitting the market here in another couple of weeks." Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it can age really well. Um, the other thing I was going to say is because we can have Cuban cigars here, I had an H. Upman half Corona yesterday. and oh, I love those are great. Half Corona. Yeah, we're smoking the Cohiba uh, Genios Maduro. Yeah, this is, this is really good. I, I have never had a Cohiba because... They're so <laughs> the expensive. Cheapest one, the cheapest one is $45, so I've yeah, never had it. Yeah, dollar more than the Davidoff from Nicaragua. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll, I won't give away my my source, but uh, these were about thirty seven dollars a piece. Yeah. So yeah, these are pretty expensive. These are, yeah. I mean, I didn't use my normal source. It's got a nice so little bit of a, an orange peel note on this thing that yeah. I'm getting. It's, these are super good. Yeah, man. they're good. This is a very good cigar. Oh yeah. When I <laughs> when I go Cuban cigars, when I go Cuban cigars here, I generally go uh, H. Upman Magnum oh, yeah. forty eight. Classic. Or, and um, what's the other one I smoke? Oh, Bolivar Royal Corona. You can't go wrong with either one of those. Have you smoked Juan Lopez at all? I have not, no. That, see, Juan Lopez is a, I think it's a, one of what I would call a, it's close to being a boutique in Cuba as you can get. Uh, or, you know, they're smaller production runs, I'll say. Um, and then the other one is Vigueros, uh, which is a very good, that's even a smaller production Um they're just kind of I like I'm like some of the under the radar Cubans that you can find, and those are two really good ones. The other thing. For oh, sorry, obvious, Dave. so oh, that's it, I, with the one I couldn't think of. I did say it right. Is uh, San Cristobal de la Habana mm-hmm. the La Punta size? San Cristobal de la Habana La Punta. We've talked about those in the yep. show before, Dave. I don't know if you ever had those. No. Yeah, those are are not a, a super expensive uh, Cuban brand, um, so maybe something you know if you're you're looking for a Cuban cigar uh, to smoke, that one's really good, dude. It's probably one of my favorites. And then, I, and this goes into the restrictions and stuff that you're talking about, in that even though um, a lot of people smoke Cubans here, and there's a very good Cuban cigar market because there's no embargo here, the selection is extremely limited. So you might get like say, you know, H. Upman, for example, but but you know, the the, the shop might only carry like four different kinds or four right. different lines or something, because they can only carry what they can sell. Because for them, the outlay cost is so huge. To have cigars just sitting around is really is really expensive. So they try to only have stuff that moves quickly. Mm. Yeah, and you can't blame them. Oh, no. exactly. Well, I was talking to Will the other day, and there was a place in New Zealand, and their restrictions are similar. And a guy was going to – he had all these customers wanting to try the Alec Bradley Texas Lancero. That's a great story. And he was saying that he couldn't stock it because the tax – because of tariffs and restrictions, the tax alone on the box was $1,000. Oh, my now, God. Now, the Texas Lancero, and Dave will explain a little more about this, is a 7 by 70 It's not a Lancero. But Dave, tell him why uh, that tax. Because so, of the weight. Because of the weight, yeah, exactly. So I heard that, and I, I mean, I'm not knocking the cigar, but would would you pay it? I wouldn't pay a thousand dollars for most boxes of cigars, you know. It's true. Yeah. But but that's just for that's just the tax for the box. Like that's that's, that you, I mean, that's not even retail price or anything. Yeah, that's, that's just a minor ball. rounding error at that point. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the actual price of the cigar is insignificant right. in comparison to the tax. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy, craziness. But no. 
But Do no, we- um, I mean, I guess in, in terms of the restrictions, like I was saying, like the biggest hit is with events. And it, it's, it's hard for people that smoke cigars to get together unless they hold their own private events, like at their house, basically. That's unbelievable. I mean, you think about the fabric. Think about if you took events away from this industry. And by the way, it's already starting to happen in some areas. Massachusetts, I think, is already it's very hard to have an event because there's restrictions as well as New York City. So just think about if that that component was t- not saying there there aren't events, but it's getting harder. But if that component's taken away from the cigar industry, it's it would change. Dave, let me ask you a question. Let's say tomorrow, Facebook said we can't put anything more on tobacco. How would that change this? I mean, that would probably be the knife in your back because you're what you're seeing you're seeing a lot of this, these these exciting blends through social media but guess what that it's a it's a they could make that call tomorrow oh yeah and i mean there's restrictions already on facebook in terms of tobacco ads and things like that so it, it's not out of the realm of possibility where it would kill the market here and i think some of the stuff you'll talk about later in your show when it talks about regulations and cigar rights and stuff. Where we kill it here is like that's the space where people get together to talk about cigars. So like I belong to a forum called um, Cigar uh, Cigar uh, Lovers of Australia, and like we'll post what we're smoking. People will hold like events over Google Hangout. People will plan events, post it on, say like, "Hey, I'm having an event." at my house, you know, come on down or event like somewhere. Um, and if so, if they shut that down, that's like a major social outlet for cigar smokers here because of the lack of events in shops. So that would be a big hit to the industry. See, but, but yeah, I'd even go further with, for example, with Facebook. Let's say company XYZ has a Facebook page. And that's where you kind of go to get, you know, if you're the average consumer – um, and, you know, maybe you're not going to a cigar coop or a half wheel or, you know, or, or the sites that are covering, but you're just kind of that casual person. You know, the first thing, hey, I'm going to go look at company XYZ and see what they got, you know, on that page. If that's suddenly taken away, you're kind of taking something away from what I would say is a person who's not on a cigar forum. I mean, I'm not disputing what you say. Taking a cigar off a cigar forum would be bad. But th- but that could be a major blow in terms of trying to grow your company as a business because this this industry has become very dependent on social media. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, Go ahead. Yeah. Dave. Well, I was just gonna say advertising here as well. Like, there's very tight regulations around it. To like, you know, it's really hard for shops, even if a shop has their own Facebook page, to put what they're selling on it here because it falls into a bunch of advertising restrictions. Oh, yeah. So, well, we've hit every single one of we've those. We've hit them all. Yeah. YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. <laughs> and even uh, when we were with Squarespace, who we left basically because they, if you want to have a store and sell things, even if you're a licensed tobacconist, you cannot sell tobacco through the Squarespace store because their back end credit card processor does not allow tobacco sales. So if you're selling cigars in any capacity, you can't use Squarespace. And Blogger, we had to take our – I mean, we had to move off of Blogger, blogger for – restrictions. Th- that was one reason. We couldn't have tobacco ads on a Blogger pla- – and blog- Blogger had its limitations, but still we couldn't use it. Right. And the uh, Twitter was pretty funny. I tried to take on an ad on Twitter, and they told me that our Stogie Geeks Twitter feed had inappropriate language which is basically just a cop-out saying you can't take ads out on tobacco. Because their guidelines do say, well, if it's not directly related to smoking, like an ashtray or a humidor, you can advertise. I was advertising how to build a cigar man cave, which I thought would fall under that same thing. And they said, no, inappropriate language. So they basically didn't even give us a chance to fall nope. within their guidelines. Facebook, if I, my last attempt at taking out an ad was a picture of me and Jose Blanco. And... <laughs> Um, they told me I couldn't take out an ad because it was promoting tobacco. And they didn't even mention the word cigar. It was just a picture of me and Jose Blanco. And, and that's why, like, the CRA piece, so important. Mm-hmm. Uh, your money is going to lobbying efforts and helping to basically make these policymakers 
awareness of this, and it's it's like Jose Blanco will say it's ongoing education. Well, and you well, know, I, Glenn's I, coming on next. Yes, and Glenn, you know, has the stance. Well, we're we're dealing with the government, but we're going to try and convince Glenn <laughs> that there are battles outside of the government that need to be, in my opinion, are equally as important. Right, and this is a first. I'm not saying business. I'm going to convince is, Glenn of that, but we're certainly going to bring up the issue with Glenn, and we have before, so he's no stranger to yeah. this topic. I mean, it could affect. Both of you know, we both have small businesses here, right? And like Dave, it could have. I mean, this could have a huge. And you're building an audience, Dave, in the U.S. right now. I mean, you're doing a great job. You have had some fantastic guests. Just think. Yeah, of you that. had that Jose Blanco character. Jose Blanco. On, right? He's had John Huber. He's had <laughs> Pete Johnson, Caldwell. I mean, Dave, you've done a great job. And I just, I, I would. Your your show is growing, and I'm telling you, there's a lot more to come. And I hope. You know, I hope that they don't just kill it for all of us. Now, Dave, you're doing a great job, and you're a, a cigar expert. We're going to test your knowledge <laughs> <laughs> of cigars. So are you ready to play I, cigar trivia? We can t- if we have more time, we can continue the discussion. Yeah, but yeah. I want to make sure we have time to play, play cigar, cigar uh, trivia. I, all I do is smoke them and listen to music, man, but I'll yeah. try my best. All right. Um, oh, no, wait, one, one caveat, not- one caveat. We're not telling you the answers. Yeah, we're not going to tell you the until answers. Until the end of the show. <laughs> until the end of the show. <laughs> the whole end. So you're going to have to you can wake right. up tomorrow morning and find out what the answers I'll are. I'll give you your score, and you'll be able to see for now whether you did better than Will. <laughs> yeah. But I will oh, give you your I, score hey, okay. if I can make this work on my tablet. Okay. Right. Dave, are you ready to play cigar <laughs> trivia? It's I'm multiple sure. choice, dude. Well, I don't know if we want to let you phone a friend or not. If we have time, I might let you phone a friend. It's kind of like he wants to be a millionaire, but <laughs> you don't get a million dollars or really any money or prizes. So <laughs> Other than that, it's, Other than that, like it's it. going to be so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave, you ready? Yep. Okay. The first category, cigar history. There's only two categories. First one is cigar yeah. history. There are 10 yeah. questions, all multiple choice. First yeah. question. When did Connecticut Broadleaf first appear in the cigar market? Was it A, 1920s, B, 1820s, C, 1950s, or D, the last time Will Cooper had hair? Ooh. I'm going to go, what, um, was it 1920s? I'll go with that. Is that your final answer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Next question. Oh, you're not telling them if it's right or wrong till the end. Um. <laughs> Okay, you can't. Well, because then I can't. Yeah, yeah then you're right. Okay. Will, yeah. Okay. Um, the phrase "close but no cigar" originated from a Bill Clinton's presidency, b a cigar being a popular carnival game prize, c Hollywood movies, or d what the FDA has been saying for the past few years. I'll go with the uh, with the prize. I'll go with the cigar prize. So you're going with B, a cigar being popular carnival game prize. I'll go. I'll go with that. Yeah. Okay. No, I need to. I need to edit. 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 <laughs> Not too good with tablets. <laughs> oh, what the? Hundred percent so far, man. I'm, I'm. I like the. I like the feel. I like the vibe. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to be able to. Okay. <laughs> well, read them the next question while. Uh, I don't have. Oh, you got it. All right. Just. I okay. Need... All right. I'm going to just. He's... If one of the production guys can grab my laptop out of my bag, that'd be great. Are you Are you pouring the Jamesons on your tablet? Like, yeah. is that what's going on? <laughs> I might as well have. All right. Uh, Fidel Castro got his own brand in 1966, which was called A. Monte Cristo, B, Castro Cigars, C, Cohiba, or D, Partagas? I think I'm going to go with C. C, Cohiba. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to switch to my laptop so I can actually keep score here. This is a li- live, live streaming video here. Live. This thank is you, Chris. All, thank you, Chris. This is all being... Got to got to give a shout out to our production guys Chris and Nick. I can't type my password yeah. with this ridiculous um, ring on. They are just doing they keep this whole thing going. So That's high tech, man. Like I'm outside using the flashlight on my cell phone. You guys got like <laughs> screens and stuff. It's fantastic. Okay. This is this is way better now. Okay. 
Where does the term stogie come from? A, George Burns invented it. B, Cuba. C, it's Spanish for cigar. Or D, Pennsylvania manufacturers who used Conestega or covered wagons. I, I go George Burns. I'm going to say George Burns, A. Okay. Question is, a thousand tobacco seeds can fit inside of what? A, a pint glass. B, nestled in Paul's chest hair. <laughs> C, a thimble. Or D, a 55-gallon drum. Oh, I'm tossing up between um, A and the chest hair. <laughs> I, I, well, actually, actually, it's a, eh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with chest hair. Okay, that's your final answer. It's the best answer. Chest hair is always the answer. What does <laughs> hecho a mano mean? A, man hands. B, handmade. C, manly men. Or D, Hector's man. All right, the, so Paul's chest hair isn't a. Isn't it's not. An it's not enough. That's off the <laughs> table, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, the the made by hand. So B. Hand made was. B. That's his final answer. Yet. Okay. The Cuban embargo banning the importation of cigars and other goods from Cuba was put into effect in which year? A. 1962. U.S. B, Cuban embargo. This is. U.S. Cuban embargo. Yeah. B. 1961. C, 1960, or D, 1992? Um, I'm going to go 62. The first successful commercial crop in the U.S. was cultivated in 1612 in which state? Is it A, Connecticut, B, Rhode Island, C, Virginia, or D, Pennsylvania? I think oh. Stokey Sander was old enough to remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he has a <laughs> hands-on experience. <laughs> he planted it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he planted uh, it. I'm going to go with that. Uh, I'm going to go with um, Pennsylvania. Okay. In 1994, the Cuban government created this organization to handle the global distribution and marketing of Cuban cigars. Is it A, General Cigar, B, Cohiba, C, Habano's S.A., or D, Swedish Match? Uh, C, Habano's S.A. In what year did Davidoff cease production of cigars in Cuba? Is it A, 1961, B, 1966, C, 1989, or D, 1991? Uh, I think it was, I think 61. So A, I think that was. Okay. All right. Now we're going on to the plants. These questions <laughs> get a little more difficult, Dave. So <laughs> Oh, they get you. more difficult. Okay. Yes. Um, so far, you're batting uh, 50%, just so you know. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Dave. In case you're it's wondering. not bad. No, no, no. No, they're tough questions. They are, they, they were Again, not... it is multiple choice, but I mean, still, we're, we're you're, at, these... you're yeah. at 50%, Dave. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Uh, cigar tobacco plants require how many hours of sunlight per day? Is it A, 4, B, 6, C, 8, or D, 10? Jeez. I'm going to go... Six? Okay. The lowest priming of a tobacco plant is called what? Is it A, Lajero, B, Viso, C, Seiko, or D, Volado? <coughs> I'm going to go with uh, B. Okay. A cured tobacco leaf is brown because what has been replaced by carotene? Is it B, chlorophyll, C, cholesterol, D, caloric acid, or E, pigment. Did, he, did you leave one out? Nope. Oh, you said an A? Nope, I didn't leave one out. Okay. Uh-oh. Um, I'm going to go with the, the last one. I'm going to go with E. Uh, there was no answer E, Dave. Let no, me, you, oh, you, I thought... Let me repeat the... Yeah, you said an E. You did s- I said E? That's why I said... Oh, the, okay, sorry. So it's A, chlorophyll, 
B, cholesterol, C, caloric acid, or D, pigment? Sorry, what did I say? D, D. then, yeah, I'll go with D, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what is the country of origin of the Cameroon wrapper? I know you can get this one, Dave. Is it A, Nicaraguan, B, Indonesia, C, Cameroon, or D, Ecuador? I'm going to go with uh, Cameroon. Okay, that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad you did that. To create, <laughs> to create a Maduro wrapper, you need what? A, a Maduro seed plant. B, to use the right fermentation process. C, a Maduro priming. Or D, black paint. Ooh. Um, I'm going to go with B. In the uh, in the the top most sorry I wrote this question messed up so the top most priming of a tobacco plant is called what A Corona B Lajero C Viso or D Volado Um I'm gonna go B Lajero Okay this type of plant was developed in the 1930s by Diego Rodriguez, named after its birthplace in the Voleta Abajo region. It was the premier wrapper for Cuban cigars in the 1990s. Is it A, Habano, B, Criollo, C, Corojo, or D, Piloto Cubano? Um, I'm going to say... B? B Criollo. Sure. Okay. No? Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> I'm not saying whether that's right or not, Dave, but <laughs> you and Will both got that question wrong, if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hardest question I thought of the bunch, actually. Because it made me, <clears throat> even though it's, well, this, okay. I'll leave or, it. You know, keep it down. I'm in the yeah. middle of questions here, yeah. Will. <laughs> Primarily used for filler, this Dominican tobacco plant derives part of its name from the Spanish word for aroma. Is it A, Piloto Cubano, B, Olor Dominicano, C, San Vicente, or D, Chabao Valley? Uh, B. Okay. Picked or primed, tobacco leaves are hung in barns, also known as casas de tabac, for approximately how many days before moving to the next stage of the process? Is it A, 30 days, B, 7 days, C, 50 days, or D, 60 days? Uh, um, I'll go A? A, 30 days. Sure. It, this is the last question, Dave. So you're you're off the hook after this the one. Final question. In the Man. first in the first phase of fermentation, leaves are bunched together in gavilas or bunches of five or more leaves, then laid in short piles about one to three feet tall. These piles are called A burrows, B pilones, C piles, or D mounds. Uh, I'm gonna go with B. B. Pilones, your final answer. Yes. Okay. Let me just calculate your score. <laughs> just, uh, I don't know if it does negative in the calculation. <laughs> um, so you got a 45%. Congratulations, <laughs> Dave. You are behind Will currently in second place of Will's score of 85%. <laughs> Bye. Gosh. I think for whoever comes in last place, we'll buy them a Tobacconist University book. Yeah, <laughs> the, the book on Dave, Amazon. These are not easy questions. These were not. These were not meant to be softball questions either. So no, were, it's hard. Again, there, it there is was a lot of trick choice, questions though, but, in there. Yeah. So thanks well, for playing, it, Dave. We will release the answers. Um, yeah, for the, for the for the guests who may be watching, you know, don't go researching. You know. Yeah, don't play. You know, no <laughs> cheating. Yeah, no we got cheating a couple of other, Not every guest is going to get the quiz either. We're going to ask Glenn Loop these questions next, Dave. So stay tuned for that. Well, it just goes to show that even you out there watching can have your own cigar podcast because... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we do it. I only know the answers because I use the internet, okay? It just makes me look smart, okay? Wait. It's smoke and mirrors, dude. <laughs> 
So, uh, but hopefully by everyone, you know, going through these questions and then learning the answers at the end, we all learn together. We all learn. I mean, like I said, there was a couple in there. Some of us have some more learning to do than others. It's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to say it's the time. To, no. <laughs> it's late where Dave is. It's so, late, yeah. yeah. They, uh, so do we, what time? Are we we uh, have a couple more minutes with Dave. Okay. Uh, have, so go ahead, Will, while I collect myself here. Um, you know, Dave, in terms of, um, you know, we've talked, I know we've talked a lot about you in terms of uh, cigars and, and music on the Cigar Jukebox. And one thing I think, you you know, for, for folks, again, who might not know the um I would say the mission of Cigar Jukebox, which is, uh, by the way, I really encourage folks to check out that podcast. Just tell us a, a, a brief 10,000-foot uh, level what, what Cigar Jukebox is and where you could find well, it. Yeah, so um, basically uh, I, was, I smoke cigars. I listen to music when I have cigars, and I was finding that certain songs would match with certain aspects of the cigar. And so I thought I would do a podcast of it. And it's basically like other pairing podcasts. So it's matching music with the cigar. And I think what it does is it, is it sort of gets at the mindset when you have a cigar and, and talking about the full experience. And it's, and, it's, um, and it's a bit of fun. And it's a way for people that listen to not only get introduced to new music, but also get introduced to new cigars and maybe something they can try that's different than – um, other say drink pairings or other pairings that they do to try it out and um, and see if they you know what they find with music and cigars uh, as well and the interviews are are mainly to bring these cigar makers to people that can't go to shops um, and and see them at events and things like that to hear from these people and hear about their creative um, process and things like that so it's it's to try and like expand that out to people that don't have access to those things. So you can find it um, at Cigar Jukebox. It's on iTunes. Uh, if you don't have iTunes, if you find me on Twitter, which is at Cigar Jukebox, um, all the shows, all the links to the shows get tweeted out. So if you just click the link in the um, tweet, it'll just bring you right to the show and you can listen to it from wherever. Yeah, and the other thing I just want to point out on Dave's uh, broadcast, which is I really encourage folks to check it out. He's got uh, he introduced a segment a while ago, and he has cigar uh, cigar celebrity DJs, uh, where they actually pick a playlist, and Dave and and the DJ of their personalities in the industry go through that playlist, and I I found that I really enjoy those segments a lot. Yeah, thanks. No, it's um. So what happens is, since I usually for most shows I pick the music for the cigar, we have what's called guest DJs. Where, um, for example, like John Huber's done it. Um, Robert Caldwell just did one as well. Oh, that really? I, oh, I, I can't to, wait to hear that you know, one. Oh, the audio was a disaster, but he uh, was very good. But what we do is like we both smoke the same cigar. We each pick five songs, and then we go through and talk about why we picked the songs that we picked and um and we play the song and the other because will is a humble man the other um segment that we have is because wills does such a great job in um the uh cigar news areas we have coops corner where will will come on and talk about stories in the cigar industry and we'll bounce off each other and stuff like that and that's a good way for people um that aren't up to date with all the blogs and stuff um, to come listen and get an update on news and things, as well as what you guys are doing with the shorts and the news um, segments that you guys are doing, which are fantastic. Um, yeah, and Paul's been on a couple times to talk education, educate people on Lanceros and on Connecticut's. Those so are no, great segments. Um, great segments. Yeah. It was a lot and, of fun. And, and I just want to congratulate you guys on the four years, because I know for me and a lot of people here, it's a great access to news. You get great access to the guests. Stogies of the week. I sit there with my um, notepad and I'll write down what, what you guys are smoking and I'll rewind a bit of the podcast if I miss it and then write it down and track them down. So you, it's a great, you guys do a phenomenal job. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. You know, I know we've developed a friendship over the past couple of years and it's like, I know you're so far away, but I feel like we're, we're like brothers here. Um, I just, you know, I enjoy the interaction. Dave's helped us out a few times on us Stogie Geeks as well, um, you know, filling in and just kind of. So we, last year I bumped Dave off the schedule um, 
I had to get him on this year, so I made sure he had a slot here. But it was I just want you to know I had nothing to do with that. No, day. it was me. <laughs> it was it was not Paul. It was me. Um, <laughs> but I think that yeah, well, in I was fact, like, "What do you mean, Dave's not coming on? This uh, is outrageous!" <laughs> <laughs> it but, almost uh, tore Stogie Geeks apart. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was heartbroken. Yeah, exactly. I had to drink myself into a slumber to recover from that. Uh, but, that, that's shocking. But the, you know, it's great to share knowledge with you. But also, you know, I think there's an imp- I hated leading off with some of the doom and gloom, but it was important to hear yeah. what's going on there. And we've had a lot of new listeners since you were first on, so I think that was important. Well, well, really quick, and I know you got another guest on, but I was talking about the same thing with Dave Garofalo, and he 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 made a really good point. And the and the way that all these things have come through here is that cigar smokers don't have a voice here legislatively. So all these things came in, and there was no real opposition, which is why it's important to get people sort of like Dave and like others with cigar rights out there talking to people um, in Congress and stuff like that to try and get your voice heard, or else like here, stuff just gets thrown through, and um, cigars just get lumped in with everything, and there's no sort of opposing voice. Exactly. Dave, thanks again uh, for being a part of this and uh, look forward to, you know, continuing to kind of work and collaborate with you. Appreciate it. (laughs) Dave, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. We'll take a short break. Yeah, with that, we're going to take a short break. Uh, Cuba, next guest, who is uh, Glenn Loop from the CRA, which is very fitting. Uh, I do want to encourage everyone before the Glen Loop segment, you got a little time. Take the time out of your day. Take some, smoke a couple less cigars and go sign up for Cigar Rights of America. Cigarrights.org right. is the website. Go there. Sign up for a membership. Please, 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 if you smoke cigars, please, please go do that. Or renew, and that's important, And too. use Will's number. What was it again? 0159 is the ambassador referral code. I will send you another cigar if you send me proof of that. Excellent. At the show. The show at StogieGeeks.com. The show at StogieGeeks.com. Yep. Yep. That's right. We're going to take a short break. Come back. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 